Hey guys, welcome back to the This Is Soul Skate Shop YouTube channel. Today in this video, I'll tell you everything there is to know about how to skate fast. Let's say you're running away from your best friend because you said something stupid. Ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or uh, you want to go on a long adventure and skate super far away from the city and discover new paths. Oof. Or you want to do a race. In this video, I'll tell you all the techniques there are to know on how to skate super fast and what hardware to choose when you do it. Normally I advise people to just go out and be playful, uh, have adventures, learn new techniques and uh, explore the city, make new friends. Those are the most important things to do on skates, I think. But speed can be, definitely be a part of that. You can do races, you can go for long distances. If you want to go fast, you also need to be safe. So the first part of this video is just about safety. You can be safe in your technique and you can be safe in your hardware. So let's start with the technique. First, of course, there's falling technique. Um, we have a special video just about falling techniques if you want to dive deeper into that. I'll quickly mention the best technique there is if you go really fast and that's the proposal technique. For that, it's best to wear knee pads. I'm not wearing knee pads, but let us show you how to do it anyway. So if you want to do the proposal falling technique, firstly, you get down all the way to the ground and then you just put one knee on the ground. If you're wearing knee pads, you can just drag your knee over the ground until you come to a complete standstill. Don't do it when you have shorts or no knee pads or going to the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Tips to do the proposal better is to have your butt on your heel and your knee next to your foot. Sit like this. Then if you fall forward anyway, you can always use your hands later but it's best to aim at the perfect posture and then have your hands as a secondary option. The next technique is of course the mermaid technique. You can recognize a good skater by the holes in their pockets because this is what you get from the mermaid. Um, so you should always wear good jeans when you skate, never wear shorts because then you are not mermaid ready. Eric, can you show me a mermaid? Uh, not now. Okay, <laughs> I'll show you one. Okay, so the mermaid is you get down all the way to the ground. You tilt your foot to the side, reach out your hand, and then just sit right there. At super high speeds though, where this video is about, it's best to do the proposal technique. But I've also done the mermaid at probably 30 kilometers an hour, I think. But I've also done the mermaid at, I think, 30 kilometers an hour. So it's definitely possible. Practice this, watch our videos dedicated to this subject before you do anything on skates. Falling technique is super important. Then the last thing regarding safety is not a falling technique, but it's how to deal with bad surfaces. Like here's a little ditch. How to ride over it is with your foot in front of each other. Don't have your foot too wide, so you shouldn't be like this. And they shouldn't be like in one line, but maybe at 10 centimeters distance from each other. And then pretty far in front of each other. And your weight should be on your last foot and you should be strong. You should have all your muscles in your leg tensed up and then you're ready to deal with anything. Even if there's like gravel like this, you can easily ride over it. Boom. Because if you're going fast, you maybe don't, don't see everything that's coming. So you need to be prepared to deal with any sorts of difficult situation. Then of course you also need to brake. We have an entire video again about braking techniques. Watch this because there's so much to learn there. I cannot teach you how to brake in like 10 seconds now. I can quickly tell you the best technique to break and I think at high speeds that's probably this one where you are wide and you do like a plow stop but with stepping I call it the penguin stop you can do that super high speeds like this you can also of course do the t-brake but t-brake is a little bit more complicated to learn people struggle with it a lot uh, I definitely recommend you to learn it of course practice it practice practice it play with it and you want to just have like different braking techniques in your tool belt so that in different situations you can do different techniques. Do realize that there's a difference between braking and stopping techniques. Stopping techniques are for coming to a complete standstill and they are totally different than the braking versions. For example, this is a stopping technique where you go wide and then you close. Or you do it with one leg, so you go wide like this and you close. Or you can do a step, you can do like step, step, grab the peanut butter, or you can do a stomp stop, boom, like that. So these are all stopping techniques. They're useless if you go on high speeds. Don't do stopping techniques when you go fast. If you want to learn any of these braking techniques, 
then be sure to get a lesson from our skate school. You can do it here in the Vondel Park, right behind the shop or at the location somewhere else in the Netherlands. Of course, we can travel to you as well. So check out this soul.com to learn more about our lessons. We have a shop in Berlin as well. And there we work together with Berlin Liner. You can check out his information on berlinliner.com. All right, next topic is how to be safe in your hardware. You see that Eric and me are using a little bit the same boots. They're both black, of course, but they're also both hard boots. Hard boots uh, with a good cuff and good support. They offer the best price quality uh, for the support they give. You can always go for carbon boots, but they're so expensive that we're happy to sell you a pair of carbon boots because we, of course, work for This Is All Skate Shop, which is right here next to the Fondle Park. But most people just get a hard boot. With those hard boots, you can learn all those braking techniques that I just showed you because you need good support to do all these, all these techniques. To get that control that you need when you go fast, you need to get a skate that offers you that control. If you have a cheap soft boot, those are really flimsy and weak and they have a lot of sideways instability. And with those, you can never like really get good. So now we're done with talking about safety. And now let's talk about how to actually skate fast. We can divide that in hardware and in techniques again. Let's start with techniques. For this, it really matters in like how long you want to skate fast. Like let's say you want to skate to that tree over there and you want to be there super fast. It's totally different what you're doing then as if you're going for like a 60 kilometer ride and you want to uh, do that before dinner because otherwise uh, somebody gets mad. So this is a totally different technique where what you're doing then if you're doing for a, a long ride then you maybe do something like this. Everything I'm gonna uh, explain to you, we're gonna break it up as well, if it's like for short or for long. Let's look at what your foot are actually doing. If you are taking a charge, like we did, just did to the tree, you're gonna have like quick motions and you have your toes outwards like this. Let's, let's show you again, yeah, okay. You're gonna do it with your toes outwards like this. If you skate for a couple of kilometers and you want to do that as, fa as fast as possible, you're gonna do the double push. And I'll show you the double push here. And that's where if your foot actually goes to the opposite part of your body, so you push inwards and then you push outwards. Your outer push is bigger because it first goes inwards and then it reaches out. So you have like an extra push. You push inwards and your outer push is bigger. This is a challenge usually for beginners because beginners always skate like this. If you get a little bit more advanced, you start skating like this, so forward and then backwards. And then only advanced skaters can actually go first inwards and then outwards like this. It's super hard to maintain a double push for like 20 kilometers or something. You need a lot of training for that. I don't know if you want to really go for that, but so I would say that the double push is more for something like maybe a couple kilometers because then you're probably tired because it also takes a lot of energy. And that's also what I mean, like, like with everything in the technique, it depends on like how far do you want to to take it and that takes us to the next topic and that's how low you are if you look at speed skaters their back is like totally horizontal and they skate like really like this but i can only skate for this maybe like like maybe a couple hundred meters and then i have a sore back so would i really be faster if uh if i skate like that no because i would be tired like that uh, so for me, that would not be an option to, to really have my back horizontal if you want to skate for a long period of time as fast as possible. Uh, it does give you a lot less wind resistance. So getting as low as possible, definitely at high speeds, you have less wind resistance. So you'll go faster, but at what cost? That's always what you have to ask yourself. So normally I just skate like this, a little bit lean like that, and that's fine. I wouldn't really like have the goal of really leaning forward that much as speed skaters do. Next topic that we can do is the arms. So we discussed the legs, now let's move on to the arms. There are four different levels of arm movement. And what beginners do is they use their arms for their main balance. And this is what you should definitely avoid. Because if you use your arms for your main balance, you can no longer like really use your arms as a secondary balance. Because if something happens, you need to like use your hands and they're kind of like, like parachute that you can throw out. So if something is on the road and you trip, well, you need to throw out your arms and you can save yourself a bit. If your arms are already there, your parachute is kind of like already out. 
So the best thing to do is to learn to skate compact because that's the safest way because then you still have your arms to do stuff with. A good technique to learn to control your arms, so to get to the second way of using your arms, is to skate like a Buddha. Boom. Try to focus and have your hands in the middle of your body. And you'll immediately notice that either your hands are gonna do this, you're gonna move around, try to stop that. And if you try to stop that, you'll notice that your lower body will completely change and your technique in your body, in your legs, will be a lot more demanding uh, and it will change it. Always try to skate from your belly button down. And this is a good way to force yourself to do that. Then the next thing that you can do, is, let's say you want to do a sprint, you can really like swing your arms and the more you swing your arm, the faster you can push off. So that's the next thing. I wouldn't start off with swinging your arms. I would start off with first learning to control your arms before you start swinging them. Um, the more you extend it, actually, the more, uh, the more speed you'll get. You can see these old school videos where people like really like do it like exaggerated with stretch arms, and it actually works. The more you swing your arms, the faster you will go. So it's fun to play around with that. If you want to go for a long distance skate, it's nice to have your hands on your back. Like that. Yeah. Also, watch my marathon video where you can see me and Eva doing the marathon in one hour 25 minutes. See Eva behind me or in front of me. Real people. This was the Berlin Marathon and the video is on Eric's channel. If you look at marathon skating and if you look at that video, you see that everybody is riding in a train. So that's the last tip that you can do if you want to skate fast. It's actually a lot less wind resistance right behind somebody so this is a good tip it saves probably like a half hour on your marathon time if you're right behind somebody it goes a lot faster and then also use your fingers on the back of the person in front of you to push them a little bit yeah. all right that was everything about the technique to skate fast now let's let's dive into the hardware to skate fast. There are, of course, a, a lot of different components on skates. There's a lot of talk about ABAC. ABAC is not super important. We have an entire video just about the ABAC skill if you really want to dive into it, but don't pay too much attention to it. If we get an old skate in the stock, like from 20 years ago, we usually throw out everything there is because everything is super bad, but the bearings are usually actually still quite fine. We have, of course have a skate shop. This is sold in Amsterdam, in Berlin, Berlin. This is sold.com. You can do it on the web as well. And we're happy to sell you super expensive bearings. Be my guest. But our advice is to just get some random bearings for cheap. You can also get the random bearings on our web shop, of course. This is sold.com. It only costs one euro a piece. They are great. Next topic is the wheels. The most important thing about wheel is not the hardness. The hardness is written on it, so people overthink hardness a lot. Uh, harder wheels go faster, blah, blah, blah. It's all a load of bullshit. Uh, the most important thing about a wheel is the rebound. And the rebound is how good it bounces back if you throw it on the ground. Uh, we have an entire video about the rebound where we compare all the different brands uh, with each other. It's hard for you at home to really know how good the rebound of a wheel really is, uh, unless you tested it. And actually, I'm sorry to have to say for this, the best way to know if a wheel is any good if, if it's expensive. So it's a little bit the opposite of my advice with bearings. For bearings, I say like, if it's a bearing, it's a bearing, it rolls. For wheels, if you get a wheel that's like 10 euro a wheel, it's way better than a wheel for five euro a wheel. If you get a wheel that's 20 euros a wheel, it's also probably better than a wheel that's 10 euros a wheel. So the more expensive, the better the wheel is. The higher the rebound, the better the wheel is. Now let's talk about the amount of wheels. You see a lot of speed skaters skating on three wheels. Uh, we skate on four wheels. Eric skates on five wheels. Yeah. <laughs> um, also the amount is maybe not the most important factor. Wheel size is of course a thing. The bigger the wheel, the faster it goes, but don't overanalyze wheel size. Don't overanalyze the amount of wheels. I think what is more important is the next topic is torque. So I'm brushing through wheels, wheel sizing and wheel amount really quickly because I don't think it matters that much. If you need to choose anything uh, for going fast, I would say for 
normal short distances, four times 90 flat would be great. For longer distances, four times 100 would be great. Unless you're like a dedicated speed skater, then they skate on four times 110. That, that's my blunt advice. What's mo more important is torque. And torque is the amount of force you can put into a rotation. And there's a difference between fast acceleration and a lot of push into a long stride at a high speed. So these are a little bit two of the opposite ends of the spectrum if you're talking about torque. So if you accelerate quickly, your toes are a little bit outwards and you have a fast pace. It goes like ta 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 That's a totally different thing than if you do like a proper double push and you have a really long stride and you put in a lot of energy in your, in your push and you go like this. Woof, woof. So how does your hardware affect how you skate? If you have a short wheelbase, then you're more likely to have a high torque situation like that. And if you have a long wheelbase, then you have more likely to have a, a torque situation that goes really slow like that. Um, the wheelbase is from the front to the back axle. That's what we call the wheelbase. So that's a really important thing in your speed and also in maintaining your speed for a long time. If you have a rocker and your outer wheels are a little bit higher, then you're a lot more maneuverable. This skate, for example, has a rocker, so my outer wheels are one millimeter higher. And this makes it a totally different torque situation than if it would be a flat setup. So uh, depending on what you want, you can play with the rocker and you can play with the wheelbase and that will affect your speed. But also think about like, do I want to have a high speed for a short period of time or do I want to have a high speed for a long period of time? Because that takes up a totally different rocker and a totally different wheelbase. Then the next topic is the boot. If we're talking about hardware and you see a lot of speed skaters taking a low boot, it's more like a, like a sneaker shoe, don't fall into that trap. Because if you take a low boot like that, you will lose all your techniques. You might be able to push off a little bit better if you train your ankles a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But if you don't train your ankles a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, which I don't, uh, then you don't even go faster because you have actually less control because it's super flimsy on your foot. And the braking techniques that I just showed you are impossible. So you don't see those speed skaters with the low boots, you don't see them even braking at all. And I, that's what we started the video with. It's the most important thing if you want to go fast is that you're able to handle that speed and also slow down with that speed. And with those low boots, you cannot take a good solid hard boot that's high, has a lot of support. With those, you have all the control you need to go fast. Remember, when you're going fast, be playful, play with speed, play with your environment, play with your friends and enjoy skating. That's the most important thing. Practice all the things that I mentioned in the video if you want to have more tips about hardware, you can always come by the shop. Eric is usually in the shop. I'm there as well. Take a lesson as well if you want. And if you want to learn more, also check out our YouTube video because we make a new video every week. So subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.